All right, welcome back to a brand new part two video of my Java Discord tutorial. So in the last video, I kind of introduced to you guys how to get started with, um, you know, simple event handling, right? So a lot of people kind of do get confused because they're like, oh, where do I start? Um, because, you know, people kind of just showed them the documentation and, well, not the documentation, like the, the GitHub repository. And, you know, although they do show you an example, quite often a lot of people that are actually you know not able to figure these things out are kind of like beginners so these videos are geared to help beginners that are you know new to doing things like these and if you're new to just playing with the API itself um, this video will also help you out too so um, yeah so there's actually one thing that I want to address so in these two examples you can see there's two ways how they're handling events what they're doing is they're the, the, the first way is they're handling events using the event listener, which is an interface, right? Because we're implementing it. Whenever you see the keyword implements, automatically that whatever this file is, is an interface, okay? When you see extends, right, that is a class, okay? So when we, interf when we implement this interface, right, this event listener interface has only one method called on event. So we have to override it, right? So you can actually handle all your events using just this one method, but it could be kind of like tedious. So that's why using the listener adapter is much better because the listener adapter is a class and that class has um, a bunch of different methods actually. So let me actually show you the documentation. Um, go over here and let me actually click uh, right over here. So if I click on, um, I think, I think, it's in events actually. Or it's in core, I'm not sure. Listener adapter. Like the reason why I'm, you know, oh, right over here. Like, yeah, I'm putting stress on this because I want you guys to actually understand what's going on rather than, um, you know, just watching me do these things. Because it's important. Because uh, quite often people will just watch tutorials and, you know, they'll like understand how to do, how to just use that one API. But I want my tutorials to kind of like, you know, show you guys how to do things generally rather than doing things just one way. So you guys get the idea of how these things work. So I'm trying to find the listener adapter. And yep, it's right over here. Okay, so if you can see inside the net.deviation.jd.core.hooks package, right, we have the two interfaces, event listener and event man I event manager. So event listener was the interface that we just looked at right over here. And if you click on it, it has that one method over here, void on event. So I can actually just use just this method to handle everything that I want to do. Now, do you want to do that? Well, I mean, if you want to, you could, but you don't have to. I mean, it'd be easier if you just extended the listener adapter class, okay, and then override all of the parent methods that are from the listener adapter class, right? So as you can see, the listener adapter is a class that's inside the hooks package, right? And it gives you a basic idea of the constructor, and it gives you all of the instance methods, okay? So there are a bunch of methods that you can use. Like, I would say there's probably like 100 or more, which is pretty crazy. And they all do different things. Excuse me. So you can see the method that I'm using over here is on ready. So where is that over here? So this will kind of give you guys an idea on how to actually search the documentation. Um, so yeah, on ready. If I click on that, it will basically trigger the on ready event. Okay. And there's also the on message received event, which is where is that right over here? on message received okay so that is the other event that we're going to be using and it's actually going to be the biggest event that we're going to be using because most of the time on discord you're always handling the message events so yeah um, okay so it's only four minutes into the video let's actually do some coding so let's actually have the bot respond to the user so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say okay so the reason why I have this line of code over here is I want to make sure that um, if the bot, if the if the if the message was sent by a bot, we don't want to 
respond to the bot's messages. Because what's what's going to happen is the bot is going to send a message, right? We're going to trigger this event, and then it, the bot is going to basically kind of respond to its own message. And you don't want that because it's going to end up spamming the whole server. So what we're saying is, okay, if the user is, a, if the author of the message is a bot, return. Don't do anything. Okay. Really straightforward. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay. Uh, what did I do? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay. Let's do some basic commands. So let's say, well, actually, uh, let's say if. So remember, we have this event object, and this event object is an instance of the message received event class, or it's an instance of the message received event. Okay. So if I say event dot get message, so we have this uh, get message method that will return a message object, and I'm going to say, um, let's see. I want to get the, the the content, so I'm going to say get content display, and I'm going to say dot equals ignore case, and we'll just do a simple command help, and let's do something. So let's see. Well, I want the bot to respond to the user with like a bunch of things, like with a bunch of information about the bot or the server. So we'll say event. We're going to call the get channel because we want the bot to respond in the channel that the user sent the message, right? Where the, wherever the message was sent, right? Where whichever channel the message was sent on, that's where the bot is going to respond to. So we're going to get the channel, and then we're going to call the the send message, the send message. Uh, so there's actually four different methods which dif with uh, different signatures, right? That's called method overloading. If you guys don't know, um, and we can actually we're going to use this one right over here. We're gonna use this method, and we're gonna say, "Hey there, you tr you uh, listing all features of the bot." We'll just assume that you know um, that's what's happening. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. Hopefully, it works. Um, okay, so the bot is ready. So let's say help. Okay, so you notice that it doesn't actually work. Why? Well, there's actually one more thing we have to do. We have to call the .q method. So what this does is it allows it, and if you actually read this, right? We actually uh, q. It basically allows this to happen asynchronously. So we have to call that. So let's get rid of this and run the bot again. And let's try it one more time, and this should work. See? It's almost like it's magic. So yeah, hey there, listing list, listing all features of the bot. So as a server owner, I would probably say, well, um, what does this bot provide, right? We can say this bot can, I, can, I would list all the commands, all the roles that are available, all the rules if necessary, um, you know, other features, whatever. You have to be creative, right? Um, so yeah, if you guys are, so for those that are watching this video, just be creative with what you want to have the bot send back. Um, we can also do other, you know, message events or message uh, commands, such as else if event dot get message dot get content display dot equal um, dot equals ignore case, and then I can say let's say roles right, and I can say event dot get channel dot send message. Here are all the available roles. And then dot Q. Okay, so let's actually stop this process and start all over again. Okay, and let's go ahead and say roles. Here are all the available roles. Let's say help. Cool, so that's pretty straightforward, right? Hopefully that gives you guys an idea on how to, you know, implement your own commands. Personally, for me, I would probably... Um, write my own function or method that will handle this for me because this kind of gets ugly. This kind of looks ugly. Like you're doing a lot of method chaining, and I personally don't like that because you're you're basically saying okay, event dot get message, which returns a message object, and then you're saying that you're taking that message object and you're calling uh, get constant display, which returns a string, and then you're saying equals ignore case, which is kind of tedious. Not tedious, but it's kind of ugly. So if you guys want, you can write your own method and you can call that method and you know. Uh, do that. So I think, I think with that being said, 
Hopefully this gives you guys an idea on how to write your own commands. You know, we could do one more bonus, bonus command. We can say get message, uh, let's see, um, get content display. Just to kind of give you guys, you know, an idea, you know, to play around with the API. Like I said, you can do whatever you want with this, right? Roles, um, add role, for example, and we're, you know, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Because at this point, it just kind of gets, you know, redundant. Right? And really, most of the things, most most bots all are handled with commands. And it's really straightforward. Now, what those commands do is up to the user's implementation. So that's up to you to decide. But if I do add role, added you to role. So like I said, it's really, really straightforward. And hopefully this gives you guys an idea on how to get started with your bot. So yeah, I will see you guys in my um, next video. Peace.